Okay, the ICOM ICR71A, um, the display dropped out, the um, numeral started to go haywire. One thing I should uh, mention is that the, all the screws need to come out of the top and bo bottom covers to remove the bottom cover to uh, do this operation. Before we actually try and remove the um, board that I uh, put the small um, rechargeable battery on, which was a non-ICOM product, which didn't work for two weeks, but then it uh, died. So ICOM probably had the last laugh there, but um, yeah, since I've got the PX board, um, that will do the job and um, and replace this taking the screw out and then it's um, a very um, the multiple connectors on each side it's a good to try and get it uh, with a, a good set of grips to actually do it so the PX board which we will replace this board that's there it ha it's slightly differently constructed the um, it does not go on in a similar fashion to the board that's already there, it actually um, needs to be um, rotated around to actually go on there. So the battery's at, at, at the top, but as you can see, the connectors, the way they've configured them, um, are on the bottom. So it has to be um, configured in that exact position there. Now, um, the interesting thing is this is a board for multiple uh, uh, ICOM um, re uh, receivers and transceivers and has a little set of jumpers, uh, jumper pads here that have a dash of solder first uh, received on this um, the number two uh, jumper pad here and uh, that's for an IC751 the um, pad needs to be completely clear and 000 for the ICR71A, which this is. So I just need to unsolder that little pad there, which I'll do now. Okay, removing this pretty delicate operation, I'll try and get it um, with these um, vice grips I bought from Aldi which are able to open up to the full width and just get a, um, a grip on them and just um, gradually work the um, the board up off the um, The pins, try, trying to do it reasonably uh, so it both comes up at the same, same time as it's a little bit hard. Um, a bit of a delicate, oh, there it is. Obviously didn't want to bend any of those pins in there and Putting it back in is a lot easier. Simple matter of lining it up, but uh, as you can see, the construction of the board is um, is a bit different. The way the um, PX have um, re-engineered uh, their board around like this, and um, the pad is um, it's probably a little bit difficult to see, but the pad, the solder on that se the second pad in there has been uh, removed. Um, and there is a uh, no bridge across that there so I'll leave the um, icon one out um, and endeavour to align um, the new one on here fairly accurately as much as we can and apply even pressure to um, push down on the pins 
the even leap. Okay, which that seems to have done. And um, obviously the um, the screw that held this original board down, which was um, in here and flat on the um, standoff on the circuit board, screwed in okay. But now we don't actually have that anymore, although this is on the bottom and facing downwards, but this panel and plate will actually be going back on top of this. Um, so as long as we um, insulate it um, on the top here, I think it uh, it really shouldn't be... Uh, there's no chance it's actually going to come off the post, so uh, I don't think that'll be a problem at all. Yeah, once the um, UPIX board has been position and secured in place um, which doesn't really need any padding to hold it down or anything um, because of the missing screw um, I believe this panel here that goes on top of it is virtually rests on the top of the plastic um, battery uh, holding um, assembly but it says uh, about um, having um, logic board players insulating material glued to its bottom. Make sure that the covering insulator is in good condition to replace. If not, insulation prevents battery and the icon prom board from shorting the cover plate. Well, I realised after I've just put it back together that, um, that um, and read this that there is no insulating material on the bottom of this board here, and I don't know that there ever has been and um, you don't need to actually disconnect the connectors it's easy, easy just to move the um, the board out of the way just carefully without uh, stressing the connectors and the wiring um, and there is a a slight chance that the top of the battery here um, where it's the, the negative uh, sorry it's actually the positive side as well uh, could short to this plate um, although it is it is down below the there's a plastic uh, holder that it's in and it's slightly below that so I'm not sure I actually uh, would touch the plate but um, I'm not going to um, take any chances and I'll follow the instructions uh, relative to that because I do actually have some pretty hardy plastic sort of material here I think that um, I can I can put on here and um, just to uh, ensure that doesn't happen and it's fairly thin as well uh, but very uh, tough and um, because I did notice there's very little clearance between this plate and the top of this as well when you actually um, screw it down because of the the gap between the two white uh, connectors now they do actually um, mention that um, by trimming the lod board ram connector pins 8 and the 12 pin, pinges, uh, pin connectors by an eighth of an inch. Um, they say it isn't 100% necessary, but it's a good idea. Well, you know, going in there and trying to cut all those pins down an eighth of an inch or so um, uh, could be fraught with danger as well. So I'm just going to um, put the um, insulation material on here and then see how we go. Okay, having um, insulated the bottom of the uh, the board there, um, the metal plate with um, this uh, plastic um, insulation material which I've just stuck on with fairly sticky black tape which should keep it in place, there's no chance it's going to move under there anyway. So, um, and even if it does, it's still going to um, do the job of insulating that uh, bit high, that high point on the um, on the PX board so um, I'll just put that back into position there okay all the covers back on okay we're ready to power it on and um, the PX instructions uh, say check out in R71A when you first power on the receiver the display may read an unusual frequency like triple six whatever okay we'll see well, let's hope it reads something Okay, uh, normal after the initial power up of the system must initialize the RAM settings as follows. Okay, we have um, 
what was, uh, original memory frequency, no, whatever. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, we got. I actually have an antenna plugged in at the moment as well, and um, although it's a 27 megahertz antenna, so um, we probably should. Um, uh, no, we'll go through the procedure that's uh, instructed in the. Um, Okay, um, so let's put in a valid frequency um, with the numeric pad. Okay, let's put in, um, assume we're actually on 27 megahertz, um, 27355 and uh, enter it. And um, select the mode which is uh, lower side as usual. Um, Set the VFO B in for that A button, um, A button, um, A button, A button, okay, oh, A equals B, okay, save the frequency data to memory, push the right button, and okay just set the memory frequencies um, like that okay we'll set the next one on 2 27 3 8 5 and write that to memory position 2 and Okay, well, it looks like it's working fine. I'll go to um, the dimmer again. So long since I've used this, it's been uh, haven't been using it. Um, can't remember how to drive it. Um, okay, usually have the notch and PBT about there. And um, okay, it looks like it's all uh, it's all working. Um, all everything seems to be. It's very quiet on the band at the moment. Um, oh, hold on, let's. Um, oh, okay, we're in uh, and mode. Let's just we just go to three, four, five. I've usually got a carrier there. something now yeah all right so it looks like she's a goer I can get back on the handbands listening to listen on the handbands and um, what have you